la unión está la fuerza. Cuidado, que vengo virado. Cuidado, cuidado. Cuidado, que vengo virado. Oye, oye, oye. Vengo virado, pero no como lo piensas. Porque lo vio cantar con orgullo y herencia. Borrico a soy nacido en Río Piedra, aunque me crié en Nueva York, Borrico que corre por mis venas. Las nenas, los nenes, me preguntan lo que soy por mi acento New York y mis pobres español. I tell them I'm chili. Borrico en high four, mi danza, mi copla, mi bomba, en fire. They're taking over Gouvernia, we're taking, you know, taking over Austin, we're going to be involved in more takeovers, more disruption, all aimed at the Emergency Financial Control Board. In other words, everyone knows they have the power, and now everything we do is aimed at them. Me declare un pic porque hablo español Y que me invita a trabajar por mi arco iris color Mi casa es más grande en mi paro con firmeza Pedirle a mis hermanos latinos su audiencia Estamos unidos con nuestra habla español Con nuestra mezcla de afro y dios españoles It's great to see the unity among the people I'm glad to see such a large turnout And the fact that they're connecting this struggle With Gouverneur Hospital, Fordham Hospital And a number of other struggles in the city I'm turning, but not the way you think that I'm burning Vengo virado, I'm clear, saying it loud, Boricua and proud, mulato and sincere, and I got it up to hear what you're thinking that I won't put up a struggle for the injustice and us in this asshole junk. You fumble, because I am humble, but I'm ready to rumble mumbles, I'm large. It's a just cause, because in this city, which is so many Puerto Rican people, there should be at least one college I'm that is bilingual. Strong, baby. the front and on the real to the real life to end all the strife and just strive to unite that's why i write this rhyme for the mind and the time when justice for us will be the main line i waste no time to design and take charge vengo viral that's right like in large so my message to my people es que vengan viral y no se queden parados porque unidos vamos para adelante que la lucha de octo no termina aquí sino que esta es parte de toda la acción que va a llevarse a cabo por el grupo que está trabajando para octo This college was an open admissions college. It was founded in 1970. 1970, fall of 1970, that was the first opening semester of open admissions. The first, the first semester where the university was going to have to accept every student, any student that had a high school diploma or the equivalent thereof into the college, into the university. Hostels was a warehouse that had been converted into this little community college. At that time, when the, when the college opened its doors, that the jackhammers were still going while the classes were on. So it was, it was a pretty bad situation. Also, this was one building, and that was like the size of a warehouse at Harvard. When I get off that train that day, the first time at Austin, I see, you know, I'm waiting for, you know, it's a campus, a university. And you know, I just come from Harvard. It has like 40, 40 buildings. That's just in Harvard Square. It has more buildings than that. And it's just an old tire factory. Young students, um, at that time, the majority were, were Puerto Rican and African American. Young students who had been uh, shut out, uh, uh, kept out of CUNY, uh, kept out of universities everywhere, and who now, at that time, under the, under the open admissions policy, the City University of New York, were taking a shot at college. Students of from Santo Domingo, students from the Latin America, Afro-American students, uh, there were students from all over the place. When I first got my job at Austin, I had to teach two courses that had to be taught in Spanish, Introduction to Sociology and Social Movements. Ramon had a very creative way of teaching, uh, where at one point uh, he had asked all the students what were the needs of the college and so forth. And we all went around the room and we all said what our needs were. And I remember that my, I felt that there wasn't a, a woman's organization, there wasn't, you know, daycare center, and things that we needed in the college. And what he gave us as an assignment was to go and organize that which we felt was a need. There was that, that great feeling of, pi of being a pioneer and being part of a, a college that was progressive, made it their, their, their mission to, to be sure to make sure that a bilingual college existed within the South Brown community. 
for the people and, and, and their children. You know, it was like a whole new experience and like, you know, I hadn't, you know, been in, 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 in an area because at that time the South Bronx was considered, you know, the model of urban uh, blight, you know, and it's just like it was considered like to be such a tough area, you know, full of crime, full of the savage skulls, full of welfare recipients that drove Cadillacs around and all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of uh, maybe passivity and very little student activism uh, or community activism around the school when I first came in. What really was the impetus for, the, for something to change was the news that they were going to try to close uh, the college. I remember in the summer of 75, I think it was early August, uh, when this started to hit the newspapers, you know, looking at the front page of the New York Times and reading the fiscal crisis and that the, um, the mayor, Bean, said that two of the uh, units of the city university, at least, would have to be closed. And I said, that's Austin's. That's when you began to see, uh, and it was just like a historical situation where you had these different characters who, who were at this scene at this particular moment, some who had some experiences as organizers, other who had other experiences, and combining all those kinds of experiences and blending them to become a very powerful force. Another group developed in the college, the Community Coalition to Save Boston, and that was led by Ramon Jimenez. That was, uh, had everybody included, including members of the uh, administration. There reached a point that there, there were rumors that part of the administration would be happy to see Ostos go and merge with Bronx Community College so they could get a higher position with more students and so on. So we became distrustful of the Committee to Save Ostos and we formed a coalition to save Ostos Community College. That involved community groups and involved uh, a, lot, a, a lot of community groups and involved a lot of us uh, student groups and it was it was like more democratic and it was a wider coalition and it was a coalition that in fact was willing to do a little thing things a little more militant than the committee to save all us. We are now the student coalition okay and it's not about who's president and it's not about who's vice president or what titles we have it is actually about us um, uh, joining in and everybody uh, using their um, their their expertise. There were uh, two uh, sort of parallel movements that started. Um, one, um, the community coalition. It was made up largely of students, people from the community, and progressive uh, professors here at Ostos. Um, and then there was uh, the Save Ostos Committee that was made up of uh, students also, but um, more uh, professors and um, those two movements um, started out together but it was let me tell you the response was tremendous I mean whether you were in with a with the community coalition or with the Save Ostos committee there was a universal feeling right from the very beginning that this was a uh, uh, a struggle to the uh, a life and death. Our focus in the Save Osos Committee was very, was pretty heavily top down, I think, looking back. I didn't see that at the time. And I think the orientation of the uh, community coalition was more bottom up, you know, with the students. I would represent the women's group, you know, come, you participate, and then you went back to your group uh, and gave them directions in terms of what the next action would be. I was the chairman of grievance, um, so 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 that made my job really special because everybody had a grievance. But the main grievance that I dealt with was the grievance about whether or not we were going to have a school, because every other grievance would have been laid moot if we had no school. And, and that school was an experience. Um, you know, a, a lot of relationships were being built. People were becoming acquaintances and then friends and then partners in the struggle, I mean, very rapidly. All the efforts that anyone made to save the college all were, you know, were, were, were part of the weight that moved um, the system uh, to, to allow the college to persist. I was friends with Ramon Jimenez and 
we, we, we were in communication about the political movement in the college and so on. I said, Ramon, I think they're going to close the school. We started to meet uh, at his apartment in the Bronx with student activists. There was a core group of those 15 or 17 people that have gone out to organize different sectors. Some of the students had been from the prison release program. We had a prison release program with uh, Greenhaven. And, uh, and they formed a very strong uh, nucleus as a group. United Bronx Parents, uh, St. Anne's Church, Father Luz, Puente Unida Latina, the Veterans Organization, the Oregon Students Organization, the Black American Organizations, the Dominican Organization, South American Organization. And under the leadership of Ramon Jimenez, we all came together and started planning different activities of how we're going to stop them from closing Osos Community College. Efrain yeah, Quintana was very important. Uh, he, he played a very big role. He's very, very close to Ramon. We knew that we would have to be di uh, different and, and come up with a plan to get them involved to, you know, to fight the onslaught of this, these cutbacks. And we did a lot of political education uh, with the students and a lot of consciousness raising. And I think we were preparing ourselves for what was a life and death struggle. The tension had been building up through the fall semester into the new year. And it was in uh, February, I believe, that the, uh, that the chancellor came out with a program to effect savings at the City University. And among the, among the proposals that he was making to the Board of Higher Education, the merger of Ostos with Bronx Community College. And uh, that, and, and the closing of Medgar Evers College. And of course that uh, confirmed what we suspected and really knew from the, from the beginning of the year, the academic year. That just um, led to everybody getting up and rolling up their sleeves and, and doing what they had to do. It happened around March 25th or something like that. Uh, we decided to take over the college, but it wasn't going to, were we uh, were going to take over the college and shut it down and stay in the building. We were going to take over the college and run the college and use the Xerox machine to make copies of flyers, use the phones to call the press, invite all people over to use the college for struggling to save the college. We were just throwing out the administration and we were taking over the college. The police uh, were there, but uh and we stayed on the they were in one side, we were on the other side. We were trying to avoid contact, physical contact with the police because as soon as, as shows the first contact of aggression with the police, it wasn't was was going to be a revolution, a war. Because we are we were not in 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 situation to tolerate the aggression of the police. In creating this, uh, the Save Osos Committee, there was this type of, of menu of activities which anyone who agreed with that goal could, could participate. And the teachers did feel very comfortable about asking the students to write letters, and we generated thousands upon thousands. We took over the student government because the student government was uh, basically, I mean, it was, it, it was inept if it wasn't going to try to affect change or, and, and try to save our school. My brother Donnie and um, Jacqueline Escobar, who's the daughter of Rosa Escobar, who's also part of that struggle, uh, they set up the daycare center there during the struggle. And with them, I had to go and bring back and forth the cots for the kids to take naps on and other supplies for the kids, with crayons and paints and papers. So mostly my part of the struggle, I wasn't there exactly. I was around it. I was orbiting, getting whatever was needed. We did petitioning. We collected thousands of signatures. And again, going out into the community, there was something that everyone could participate in. We had buttons again, Save All Stars, um, assemblies. I was very impressed with N Nilsa Saniel. You have to give them strength to move forward, to, to fight, to conquer. At that time, um, even with uh, the women's movement, women were still being 
uh, held back. So they, they demanded and they got equal consideration in that movement. And I think it was very important to, to, to the struggle and to the, the final outcome of keeping the school open. When we took over the building, we set up security and security team, people that had prior experience in those securities. And obviously I was in the Young Laws Defense Ministry and all of that. I was one of the people. When they assigned me to the rooftop one night, I realized that I was an integral part of the takeover. No, um, it was it was amazing because of the involvement um, of, of, of everybody in, in the, uh, the process of trying to save the school. Uh, we had idealized uh, taking over the student government, and I think that's when I realized how important my part was. I mean, once again, I was an 18-year-old kid, um, uh, but I realized that I could make a difference. I got arrested. The police, when the you know the police, to, uh, we met with the police. It's 40 of us, and we get arrested. And I'm I, and me, and then comes Panama. And we we got chains on us. And we came out on the first page of the New York Post, and I told you a story about how. All that next day, I was hoping my mother didn't buy the New York Post, man, because my mother wasn't ready for her Harvard son to be arrested. <laughs> arrested with chains on the first page of the New York Post. And Ramon and I were the first two people that were cops, man. So when we were dragged out, you know, like taken out, um, there's a picture in the front page of the New York Post of Ramon and myself uh, with hair, okay? <laughs> uh, being escorted out of the, out of the, front of the, the building that was then also. There's a story that Andy Vax tells that after the 40 people got arrested, when they're first negotiating the plea, the Candido de Leon is, is ready to uh, accept 39 people go free if I plead guilty to some kind of misdemeanor or felony. And I do think the comprehensive nature of the of the movement uh, was was the, the reason. And I, I and I do think looking back, although I didn't see that at the time, that the takeover of the building by the um, Community Coalition to Save Osses was a really critical uh, ingredient in, in, uh, in saving the college. That was a great, a great victory, and we made sure that this college would not be closed. Can you tell me how you feel about this demonstration? Yes, I think Esta es una de las ocasiones en que todo el pueblo puertorriqueño y otras nacionalidades también que se ven afectadas por todos los planes del Board of Higher Education, de cortar open admissions, de cerrar colegios bilingües y de cerrar un montón de facilidades de educación, la gente se une para una demostración eh, que verdaderamente responde al espíritu de lucha del pueblo que se está acrecentando en estos momentos con la crisis económica en que estamos sometidos. Y en tu propio punto de vista, ¿qué tú dirías acerca de toda la demostración y cómo va a llevarse a cabo? Yo creo que la demostración ha sido todo un éxito desde el punto de vista de la cantidad de gente que está aquí, de la combatividad de la gente que está presente en la marcha y de que todo el mundo está unido con un propósito de luchar juntos. Ok, muchísimas gracias.